Okay, so here we are reviewing switch statements. Uh, let's just have a quick look at switch statements. So I've gone ahead and created two types of uh, days of week representations. Here's a string representation, and here's a representation that uses final integers. And here we have created a switch statement inside our main method that is using the strings right now. And I've asked the class to go ahead and modify this switch statement so that instead of using these strings, we're going to use these integers instead. Let me just call on somebody here. Uh, Mr. Basu, sir, if I was going to replace this, uh, this string with one of these constants, what would I put over here, sir? So here I just put replace it with the capital Monday like that. And here, <clears throat> instead of putting here um, a string, what would I put over here, sir, Mr. Basu? Over here where I've highlighted this string, what would this data type be instead? That would be integer. And looks over here, I could just put in whatever day I wanted, like Saturday, like that. Okay. And then these just have to be replaced with their equivalents. Uh, I'm going to actually talk about that in a second. And I think I need to make all of these static, unfortunately. I forgot to do that. So let me just do that now. Okay. This should hopefully work. Okay. And since I've set it to Saturday, the part that should print should be it's the weekend. Let's try that out. All right. You can see it's working fine. So that's just a little review. So Mila asked the question, why do we bother with this? Why don't we just put 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 here? Yes, Mila? We don't want magic numbers. We want a descriptive code. So that's why we use these things in the first place. And these are both fairly good options for what you know so far. I'm going to show you a much better option today, which is something called an enum which actually combines the properties of the string and the integers and creates constants for you. And there's a whole bunch of other things you can do with them. So that's to set the stage. Uh, we're going to talk about enums in a little while. Uh, right, right now, though, I'm going to take a slight break here. So coming back here now, we're looking at this. And let's just look at this version that we have right here. And you can see I've set this equal to Saturday for now. And you can see I've got my, my different days of the week over here. If I was to go like this, and if I hit the compile button right now, is the compiler going to catch this error or not? I meant to type a four, accidentally my hand slipped and I typed a four and a five. And my question is, is the compiler going to catch this error? That's my question. Uh, Mr. Alejandro, sir, look up here. What do you think? It, the compiler will not catch this error. Look, look over here. Now, I was ca fairly careful about, in the code at least, to put this default in. So now if I was to run this puppy, I would at least catch it over here. But then that's going to cause me some time to go back and figure out what went wrong and try and fix it, et cetera. So you can see that this technique, while it's somewhat better than just using numbers, it's still got a problem where it's not really doing the type checking for me. You see that, right? OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce you to this concept of enum. And so to do that, let's just get rid of all this. And I'm going to put an enum in. Now, the first thing I need to tell you is that the enum can go out here or it can go inside the class. And I would like you to try and discuss with your partner, what do you think are the restrictions or the advantages of putting it inside the class or in the global scope over here? What do you think about the difference might be in the, on that? T talk to your partner for just one second, see if you can figure it out. Okay, Mr. Mulcahy, sir, can you tell me, what do you think is the difference between whether I create the enum out here or if I create it inside the class? Let's talk about inside the class first. What do you think will be the restriction on it, sir, if I put it inside the class? Very good, sir. Only the demo class and anything that goes uh, inside uh, that inherits from it will be able to access it. Uh, otherwise, up here, what do you think would, would be the restrictions on access? None. Any, any class will be able to access it, okay? So you have to ask yourself, the enum that you're creating, do you want it to be sort of 
private to your own class, you put it in the class, or do you want other classes to be able to use your enum? Then you can put it out here. We're going to put our class out, uh, our enum out here. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, enum. And you can see that it's red. This is one of those reserved words that we didn't really talk about last year, but you learned it as part of your memorizing all the enums. And we're going to create one called uh, days of week. So we're going to go like this, days of week. And just traditionally, it, the, the first letter is capitalized, similar to a class. Now, I mentioned to you that it, it, previously we kind of said only classes are capitalized. So that's that was another little white lie that I told you. That is no longer true anymore because enums are also capitalized. All right. And now what we're going to do is we're going to define the enums. And we're going to go like this. And what we're going to do now is we're going to try to rewrite this switch statement to make use of these new enums. So please go ahead and try to do that now. Yes, sir. Uh, I don't remember if I need that semicolon or not. Maybe I don't need it. I think it might be optional. A force of habit for me, but uh, probably don't need it. Yes, miss? I like We're going to show you that uh, next class. We can set it to specific numbers also. Here we're going to use the default numbers. Okay. So what I'm asking you to do now is see if you can figure out how to rewrite this here so that the the switch statement works with this enum now instead of uh, what we had before. Just kind of play around with it, see if you can figure it out. Okay, who is next? Um, Mr. Marriott, sir, what should be the data type on day now? No. Too generic, sir. What specific enum? Take another guess, sir. No? Mr. Holler, what should be the data type on my day? No guess, sir? Mr. Orispaev, what do you think? String? No, these are not strings. What are these? Mr. Alejandro? Days of week. Okay. Is this going to compile right now? Days of week equals 45? No, that's the whole point. What should we put over here now? We want to pick one. Mr. Schulson, let's say I want to do Wednesday, sir. What should I put here? Uh, let's try Wednesday. And I think we may need to use a prefix here. And there you go. Notice that I can continue to use these things here. Without change, they were constants before. They're actually still constants, and they're very similar to the constants I had before, except now they've been assigned by the enum. And internally, they do have values 0 through 6, but you should not really be using those here. You want to use the enums. Notice the difference, though, that now if I accidentally put in a number here or something, it's not going to allow it. My question to you now is even this going to be allowed? What do you think? What do you think, Mr. Franovic? What do you think? No. no. You're missing the point of my lecture, sir. It doesn't want you to use the number. It want you, wants you to use what? It's not a string. It's not a number. It's an enum. And your brain is like, oh, no, give me back that string. Give me back those integers. I'm trying to teach you a new thing. It's not a string. It's not a number. It's an enum. You can treat it like a string. You can treat it like a number. But for now, it's an enum. So what do I need to put here, sir? Um, what is it? Uh, 
Right. Okay. So I need your, your, and this always happens every year that I teach enums, people are like, oh, it's a string. It's not a string. Here, let me prove it to you. Look, I'll prove it to you. See, it won't compile, doesn't want a string there, wants an enum there. Okay, so now you see the difference, right? All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna show you how to manipulate the enum. I've already showed you how to make a switch statement out of it, but I'm gonna show you several other ways to create manipulate the enum. So one thing we can do is we can print them all. So to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the enum into an array and then print the array. So I'm gonna go like this, for So this, and this is one of the first things I wanna show you today, returns an array of these items, okay? And here, I can go like this also. I don't have to, but I can go like that, okay? Which will take the day and finally give you that string that you're longing for. Let's run this puppy now and show you how that comes out. And you can see, look, it printed them all. See that? Printed them all for you. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to convert this loop into the other type of for loop using integers. Please do that now. The other for loop will be ugly compared to this lovely loop, but we wanna know how to use it in case we ever need it. Does anybody have it working yet? Anyone? Okay, Ben, I wanna do a for int i here, so help me out here. What's the first thing I do, Ben? Okay. Okay, hold on one second. I'm gonna put seven in here for now, which is not right, but I'm gonna come back to that in a second. Keep going. Okay, and now what do I put in here, sir? Like that. You with me so far? This is an array. I'm picking out one element. And now I just wanna get rid of this ugliness right here. See if you can figure out how to get rid of the seven so that it can automatically work no matter how many elements are in the array. Should I go like this? Should I go days of week dot length? Let's try that. Oh, that's that's not right. Try to figure out what goes there instead. Mr. Ajoji, can you tell me what goes in here instead, sir? Like that. This is an array, and this is the length of the array. And this is much better than putting a seven here because it'll work no matter how long the enum is, okay? So let's run this puppy. And you can see it still works. Now, let's look at that. Can someone, why don't you chat with your partner and try and figure out what that means and what's going to print? And what's going to print here? Let's see. Miss Olivia, what do you think ordinal means? The position, that's right. And what is the position of Monday here, Miss? That's right. So you can see that it prints that, okay? 
So you know how to turn it into a number. You know how to turn it into a string. You know how to parse it like an array. You can ask it how many items do you have. You see all the flexibility here, right? It's tremendous. So that includes my part one lesson for uh, enums. Now, Ms. Uh, Mila mentioned that here it's being assigned specific numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and you have no control over that. On Wednesday, when we're together again, I'll do uh, enum part two with you, where we'll tell it what numbers to use for each of these. And to do that, we'll use the old retired Yankee ball players and we'll set them up with their own jersey numbers, like Gehrig will be number four and uh, Billy Martin will be like number one, like, like that. And we'll just make, make have them set to their jersey numbers instead of just going from zero to whatever. So what I'm going to do now is finish up by introducing your lab to you. And then we're going to go next door and work on the two labs. The lab that I'm showing you today, the pizza parlor lab. And then I want you to also finish Hangman from before. So let's look at the pizza parlor lab. And that lab is described in your textbook. So if you go over to your textbook here. And we are working on leftover Java topics. Enum is the last one. And this is your lab for pizza parlor. I want you to make a pizza parlor menu that has these ingredients, these uh, different types of pizzas. So plain, veggie, Mediterranean, Greek, and meat lovers. And what you have to do is you have to create a menu that displays each of these things. And then a number, so it start, has to start numbering in one. So this will be choice one, two, three, four, five. And then the user has to pick one. If they pick a number that's outside the range, then you have to ask them again. And then once they pick the item number that they want, you have to return uh, the enum of that type in the method. And then maybe, I don't know, do you have to print it or something? Yeah, probably have to print like you selected such and such like that. Okay, so that's the basically the thing. Now, a couple of things to watch for. They're gonna be adding and deleting pizza flavors all the time, and your code shouldn't change when new pizza flavors are added or deleted. So what should you not use in your code? Yes. You should not use magic numbers, but you also can't use another thing. The thing that I reviewed today, what is it? Well, you definitely don't wanna use strings, yes. Don't hard code the length. Don't use a switch statement either. Because if you use a switch statement and then they change the, the flavor types, you'll have to change the switch statement. We don't want that. Okay, so you're gonna use a loop instead to build a menu. All right, let's go next door and try this out. <laughs> 